Sirius, what is the creepiest thing you found in a forest? When I was young, like 13 a little girl in my town went missing. It was a huge deal, the whole town WS shook by the mystery. I don't know the details only dot that they looked for her for months and never found any trace of her. Well, a few years later I was in the woods not far from where I live. I was hiking out there just enjoying nature and I stumbled across a pink stuffed bear very worn and dirty, missing one eye and torn on one of the seams, and it had been shot through Ida's stomach with six arrows, at the base of the tree. I reached down and picked up the bear and when I stood back up I noticed that there was a picture hanging on the tree of that little girl. Found a tombstone in the woods when we were kids. The area in front of it where the casket would be was sunken in about 6 inches. Looking around there were other similar sunken in areas but no other tombstones. It was a woman's name on the tombstone and she was born in the 1800s and died in 1914. Back in the summer of 2018, I decided to go hiking with a friend. About half an hour into the trail we discovered someone hanging from a tree. The guy couldn't have been older than maybe 30 to 31, but it was quite the surprise and shock from what looked like an apparent suicide. This place we called the tar pits. They were these deep ruts in the ground, maybe 3 to 4 feet deep, and they were filled with this purple slash green muck that acted a lot like quicksand. It sucked whatever stepped in it in. If a small vehicle got stuck in it, it normally took a bulldozer to pull them out, with significant damage to the vehicle in the process. The stuff would rip the bumper right off of a vehicle while being pulled out. One summer, we had a brutal drought, and the tar pits dried up. The bottom of the holes was a giant pile of bones. Animals that a figure stepped in it and couldn't get out. A lot were clearly deer, with some squirrels, possums, and some that could have been foxes or dogs. I would still love to know what that shit was. I haven't been over there in years, I don't know if it's still like that. I discovered a suicide. Smelled decay while on a hike through boulders flat irons, scrambled up a boulder into a small rock shelter that served as a climbing access, and my sight was met with the underside of a pair of boots and a glock in a shriveling black hand. He'd been there for about a week so animals had at him. Not pretty. A face full of maggots and wasps, still but moving made me hyper aware of my eyes own orbits. I had dreams of wasps crawling in and around them. The smell stuck with me the longest. When I was about, I would say 12 a dog of ours went missing, at the time we lived in an area with a pretty big forest behind it. My dad and I decided to search for her about a day after she went missing. We came to a small clearing in the woods, we smelled something horrid and looked around. There we saw her lying down with what looked like a large knife of some sort basically propped up on her stomach. The brief glimpse I got of her still haunts my dreams. This was about 7 years ago. My friends and I went canoe camping in a new provincial park. We had this neat trip planned, we'd get flown into the middle of the park without canoes, and canoe our way out over the course of a week. First night, everything is pretty normal and cool. Next day, we go over to the head of a trail up a mountain. Mountain is a little bit of a misnomer, it's Ontario so our mountains are pretty small. The base of the trail is in a campsite. We get out of our canoes, and go up into the campsite to find the trail. The campsite is a wreck. Like, clothes tossed all around in the mud. A dehydrated meal, that someone clearly hacked into with a knife, barely eaten. Snack wrappers and trash. A couple pairs of shoes. Three different tarps, torn down and muddy. A sleeping bag, I think. Thing you wouldn't expect to be left behind, even with the messiest of campers. No sign of anyone around, but plenty of evidence there had been at least three to five people here. No sign of a canoe. Keep in mind, this is a lake you can only access via several days of canoeing slash hiking or a plane. To this day, we don't know what happened there. It was a week before we got out of the park ourselves, and we were in a rough state when we did, it was a very rainy trip so we never really found out what had happened. Some members of our party said that they saw a canoe at the site the previous night, because they'd wanted that site, and it had been occupied, but we woke up hella early and didn't see anything leave. Our best guess is still that someone had an emergency, maybe hypothermia. It was real rainy, they'd called out for an emergency rescue, and in their haste left behind a lot of stuff. When I was 14, a friend and I would go fishing just about every day of summer, we would walk about an hour to hour and half through the woods and over bogs to a series of rivers that we called the Steadies, they flowed into a very large lake. 
The last trip there, we were walking along one of the rivers, the rivers are narrow, maybe 5 feet across, at 14 very easy to jump across from side to side, anyway we stumbled up on a large pile of animal bones, we kinda got worried but assumed maybe a hunter quartered their game there. We walked to the edge of the bank and right in the center of the river clear as day was a large footprint, barefoot distinguishable toes, but just one, the left, it was big even more so magnified by the water, I called to my friend to look but as I said his name I heard a loud rumble, and the trees shaking on the other side. I looked to my friend but all I saw was the dust he was kicking up from running away, to which I promptly followed, never went back. We told people no one believed us. I had woods behind my house as a kid. I used to go back there by myself all the time and explore. One day when I was 12 or so I stumbled across what looked like a little campsite under dirt and tree outcropping. There were towels, clothes, and some car parts scattered all about. This is fairly odd for a small stretch of woods in a regular neighborhood. I didn't think anything much of it then cause there was plenty of junk like tires back there anyways. Two days later, all of the kids in the neighborhood played a nightly game of hide and go seek tag. While my sister was looking for a hiding spot, a random man jumped out from a bush and ran into the woods. My sister ran home to tell our parents that a strange man was hiding around the neighborhood. The cops were coincidentally in the neighborhood at the time investigating car break-ins. Turns out the guy my sister came across was stealing car parts and hiding them out in the woods behind my house. Volunteer firefighter here. This happened around late November of 2018. Dispatch drops our tones for a missing 16-year-old female. We are told to meet a sheriff's deputy at the fire station and await further instructions. I turn on my dash light and drive to the station to meet up with everyone else. We get the girl's clothing description, last known location etc. We all get in the trucks and start driving around to each of her friends' houses, gas stations, the school, all the local businesses and motels. Our town has a population of about 1,500 residents with only a handful of local businesses my partner and I were pulling out of one of the gas stations when I thought I saw someone walking in an empty cornfield. I tell my partner to stop as I grab the spotlight off of the floorboard. I shined the light on what I thought was going to be our missing person but it was actually a man mid-40s wearing torn up jeans, cowboy boots, and a torn white t-shirt stained with what I thought was dirt. I get out of the truck and start walking down the hill and into the field. I called out to the man and when I did he turned and started walking away. I told him politely that he wasn't in trouble and we were just looking for someone. Then he stopped but didn't turn around. As I tried to get closer to the man I felt a sudden urge to go back to the truck and leave. I turned around and starting quickly back up the hill towards the truck. About halfway up I turned around and the man, in an empty fucking cornfield, was gone. I ran the rest of the way back to the truck, slammed the door and told my partner get us the fuck out of here. And did you fucking see that shit? He says he did and that he too had an uneasy feeling while I was talking to him. I don't normally believe in the paranormal but this something you can't just put off as smoke and mirrors or your imagination. It's just one of those things that remains unexplainable. Shortly after this encounter the police chief ended up calling off the search for our town and shifted the attention and manpower to the next town over where the missing girl was later found unharmed partying and drinking with her friends. As for me and other firefighter, we don't talk about the man in the field. Ever. When I was around 12 years old, I was in the woods across from my house with my cousins. There are a few spots with random junk strewn around, country folks love dumping garbage places for free, so we were poking around. We found an old-fashioned milk can and tipped it over. A bunch of liquid spilled out, followed by a dead baby pig. We completely freaked out and ran home. Probably should have told our parents. A silver women's ring that had its too late etched into it. I still have it to this day. The weirdest part is that it was laying on its edge, perfectly, when I came across it. My mother's story she had gotten out of the car to stretch during a long drive, and she came upon a clearing maybe five minutes into the woods. On one side of the clearing was a tent with someone moving around inside of it. Inside the clearing was a pile of deer carcasses, maybe 20 in all, and one dead golden retriever on top. She was so freaked out that she ducked behind a bush only to find a set of women's lingerie and a pair of high-heeled shoes crammed under the bush. She ran and never looked back. I still get the creeps from this story. My dad and I went camping at a well-known campsite in Texas when I was probably around 20 or so. We decided to go on an afternoon hike. 
we found what appeared to be a man-made shelter. Nothing super creepy here. The next day we went back around the same time and saw our neighboring campsite sleeping bag plus a gun there. When we came back, we asked them if they had built it, they hadn't but did report the items as missing or stolen. About three weeks later, there was a mass murder and the weapon obtained was similar to the one we saw. We have no way of knowing if it was connected, but I just remember feeling really weird about it after the fact. Here's a link to part of the story, https colon slash slash www.dallasnews.com slash news slash crime slash 2017 slash 11 slash 08 slash killer quickly convicted for slaughtering six at East Texas campsite slash. We camp a lot. Where we camp there are a lot of old mining cabins out in the mountains along the Forest Service roads. No one is ever back there except people ripping through in a jeep. We were camping one time and my kids brought a metal detector with to see if we could find anything. Buried about 3 feet down around one of the old cabins was this big 1FTX 1FD metallic rock. Looked almost like silver. It was very heavy and would go off under the precious metal setting on the metal detector. We wrapped it up in a towel we had laying around and set it in my truck. We were certain we found something expensive. When we got home, I grabbed it and thought that's weird it seems lighter. I unwrapped the towel to find a bunch of broken twigs. My kids 11 and 13, thought I was messing with them. We still go back every year looking for it but have no clue to this day why it was gone. Maybe cursed and a good thing it's gone? A dead raven skewered on a stick that was sticking up from the ground like a signpost. It had its wings spread wide and beak and eyes open. A cigar wrapper and something in a different language carved into a tree, some clown masks and a sign that said love to kill we were terrified, because a kid went missing in our neighborhood. Turns out it was just a bunch of weirdos that like clowns, they turned up clean but I still try to stay away from them. Another time I saw a parking space in the middle of the woods by a pond with a really weird piece of concrete and there was a golf cart. Oh man I'm late, but have I been waiting for this question? Around 2002 to 2003, I can't remember. I was at my best friend's house for the weekend with another friend there as well. Now my friend lived pretty far from town down a country road in the woods. This East Texas, you had to turn off a farm road and down a dirt road into the woods a couple miles to get to his driveway, also dirt, and cross a small bridge over a pond to get back there. I'm going into detail too much, my point is he lived in the middle of fucking nowhere. We had explored the woods around his house before but never went too far. This particular day we decided we were going to hike the woods much further. We were walking for a couple hours and came onto a path clearly made by a four-wheeler and followed it. At the end of the path, which was only a couple hundred feet, there was a small clearing in the woods and in the middle a cabin. The cabin was a couple feet off the ground supported by blocks and had a front deck. We decided to check it out, since we're dumb kids. The windows were all barred, the door was locked. It gets weirder. The cabin was surrounded by playground equipment. Old playground equipment, like 1950s 1960s era. When we walked behind the cabin, that's when we all three got really scared. There were several mounds of dirt and shovels laying about. Almost like graves but we couldn't know for sure. We decided to leave at that point and found our way back to my friend's house. It gets weirder. A few years later when we were all around 16 years old it came up in conversation and we decided one day to go look for it again. This time we brought my buddy's .22 rifle, just in case. We eventually did find the path again and followed it, but this time when we got closer we could hear people and decided to peek through the brush and see. Everything about the cabin looked the same as before but this time there were four grown men with two four-wheelers standing there talking. And I mean some hillbilly looking dudes yell. We were a couple hundred feet away from them and watched them for maybe 30 seconds before one of them spotted us and yelled out to us. He got on his four-wheeler, and we ran. We ran as fast as we could until we couldn't hear him anymore. After that we never went back. And my friend moved closer to town that year. It still gets brought up in conversation sometimes and all of us have a real sick feeling about it. An old tin roof shack with piles of clothes and voodoo bottles. My parents owned a large piece of property with fields, patches of woods and multiple dilapidated 100 plus year old structures. Out of all the creepy shacks and barns, the one that gave me the heebie-jeebies was one in the woods at the corner of our property by a swampy pond. It was uninsulated with a bare wood floor and no lights and a deep hole outside for water. There was old crusty white wall tire tied to a tree like a swing. 
My dad said when they first moved out there 30 years ago there was an old black man that lived there called the preacher man. He had a guitar and would play songs and sing spirituals and stuff. He said the old guy would roll a wheelbarrow up and down our deserted country road singing to himself and collecting junk out of the ditches. Hence the mound of leftover garbage still inside the shack. The woods were always quiet around there, which was nice for hiking around during the day but got spooky in the evening. One day I noticed that there were old bottles placed high up in the branches of a bunch of the trees around the shack and the pond. Supposedly it had something to do with voodoo. Kind odd. Was paintballing in a small patch of woods on a farm that belonged to my friend's family friends when I was a teen and found a bag of VHS tapes. My older friend who knew the family took the VHS tapes home. I never found out what was on them but we were never allowed to play paintball there again and the two families had a falling out. To this day, my friend nor his family has told me what was on those tapes. Probably just porn the farmer thought he was disposing of, but sometimes I think it was something worse. I was about 6 or 7 years old and live in an apartment with my parents, just behind of us there was a woody area and a soccer field, in the night, we were going to visit to my grandma for her birthday and as a kid, I wait my parents outside while playing with god knows what thing. A rock? A bug? Whatever. Suddenly I look at the woody area and a big big light just appear like 20 mt in front of me, like parking vertically, I run to tell my parents what I just saw and my dad told me while laughing maybe it was an UFO, today I'm 27 and still remember that brightness, the most bright thing I ever look at. 